What is up you guys? Glitches here and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to bring you my new and improved mage build for Enshrouded. As I'm sure of you may have noticed that uh, as soon as I put out my guide, which a lot of you enjoyed for my best uh, Archmage build within Enshrouded, uh, the patch dropped less than 24 hours later and changed a ton of things. Uh, for first off, the biggest impact is uh, Water Aura got heavily nerfed. It's basically half as good as it used to, and in my opinion, not really that good at all anymore. Um, you just don't have enough intelligence um, in the new version of the build to regenerate that much health um, to the extent that we were getting before. Um, so I wanted to kind of adjust some skills there. And there's also a bug, I'm assuming it's a bug, in the game right now that happened after the patch that a lot of people haven't noticed yet, which is revolving the skills at the end of the trees, things like um, Exalted. This was one that we went for in the previous build that's supposed to give you uh, three additional skill points for that particular trait, um, depending on how much intelligence you have, and, and it's based off of the strength of your flame. Well, for whatever reason, uh, even though a max out altar at level six um, should be giving you three. It's only giving you two right now. So I put in a bug report for that But who knows how long that's going to be fixed, but that's another big nerf to the build So I wanted to shift a bunch of things around I came up with a really good combination that honestly I'm actually enjoying a lot more and it has just as good if not better survivability And you can still pretty much one shot everything in the game So without any further ado, let's jump into it and I want to show it off to you guys So first things first, let's go to the equipment. This has changed a little bit as well um, right out the gate for the helmet. We're still going to be using the Elder Hat. This will give us plus 15% magical critical strike chance as well as 12% critical strike damage. We're still using the Radiant Paladin chest piece. This gives you plus 240 max health and plus 24 stamina. The gloves have also remained the same. This is going to be the Elder Gloves plus 9% damage to magical foes and plus 12% magic damage multiplier. The next two things have changed, however. Now I'm running the Paladin Radiant Paladin trousers for the additional 2% health regeneration and plus 90 health. This will help balance out the uh, the uh, difference that we're losing from not having uh, water or anymore, as well as a few other things. And also the Radiant Paladin boots will give us plus four more health regeneration plus a nice health regeneration delay uh, buff as well. Uh, before I was using the stamina trousers and the uh, wizard trousers, um, but with the combination we're having, as you'll see, um, it's not so much necessary anymore. So that is the armor. Find it in the same exact places that I mentioned in the previous video. You can pretty much get it from any gold innate chest, um, but the quickest farm that I've found is uh, by throwing an altar down right outside the southernmost sun temple and farming the um, coffin in the basement. I'm sure there's been plenty of videos you guys have watched on how to farm that, but just set one up right outside where I'm standing here and just jump in through that little uh, door there, and you can farm every single piece for all three major endgame sets from there. Might take about an hour or so, but that's how you get it. Uh, moving on, the next big thing that changed is you'll see we are no longer using double ring of opacities. Now you're probably like, what are you doing? You're crazy. That infinite mana is like overpowered. With the setup that we have now in our skill tree, you pretty much still have infinite mana, which is nice. But now, not only do we have one ring of opacity, which has given us that 20% mana regeneration, but we're using the ring of endless light, or life rather, to give us plus 3% life leech, uh, leech chance, which will help give us even more life steal. Um, to mitigate the fact that we're not using water ore anymore. So this is a really good combo here. Uh, ring rapacity you get from the um, underneath the dirt pile by the mill um, and I forget what town it is I'll probably throw a clip up here of me showing off where it is um, and then the ring of endless life you can get by farming a golden chest that is actually very early in the game um, it's actually right outside the very first um, uh, elixir well that you do when you just start out if you can manage to get up here um, I would throw down an altar right on top of this cliff but on the back side of this cliff or you, you can drop down either side um, there's going to be two underground tunnels underneath this hill and at the end of that tunnel there is a gold chest and it's technically no different than any other ornate gold chest but for whatever reason um, the uh, um, 
Ring of Endless Life has a much higher chance of dropping from that chest in particular. I don't know why, but it is. It's just how it is. Um, I got it on like my third draw, so I just refreshed the game. And on my third attempt, um, I ended up getting it. So it did not take long at all from that particular chest, but really, really good ring to have. And that's going to help, again, balance out our health regen. Uh, everything else remains the same, including the Shroud Weaver staff. Um, this is still by far the best staff in the game. They did update in the patch the um, level description. Um, it no longer goes to 35. It's only level 25, but I don't think the damage changed at all. It was more of just a uh, graphical text issue. So anytime you go from here on out to grab this staff from the chest, it's going to drop at 25 max, not 35, um, but it should be the same still. This has 24 fire magic damage, which is going to get buffed by skills in our tree even further. Um, as well as uh, Recharge, which increases health regeneration by one. So that's going to help mitigate some health as well. So by far, best staff in the game. Um, for other weapons, we're obviously going to be using the go-to Ritual Tempest Wand. I'm hoping to, uh, in the not-too-distant future, get the legendary version of this wand. This is the wand that I use when I'm inside of the Shroud. Um, it has four plus nine shock magic damage buffs, so it's by far the best um, uh, shock damage um, wand to use in the game inside of the shroud and I'll tell you why in a minute um, once you get the legendary this will become five shock damage uh, magic damage buffs so really really good wand um, to use when you're inside the shroud when I'm outside of the shroud however the best wand in my opinion is the legendary helix wand and that is because much like the tempest wand it has all magic damage perks which you want max damage as possible and in this case it's going to be all shroud damage and for those of you that don't know pretty much every enemy in the game with the exception of a few rare magical ones outside of the shroud um, are going to be critically affected by shroud damage so you're going to get bonus uh, crit chances and bonus damage output from the fact that it's just shroud damage in general but now you're also getting five shroud magic damage uh, bonus perks and the helix weapon in general comes with two innate abilities as well one is ethereal duplication which the wand's unique ma uh, magic grants a, a 50 percent chance to spontaneously create an additional projectile this will combo with another trait that we have in the skill tree that also allows us to create an additional projectile so there is chances during combat to where with one swing of the wand you can actually fire three projectiles at once which can do a ton of damage you'll just see the enemy's health bar just deplete almost instantly um, as well as its second ability called overcharge this wand holds a chance to amplify its damage output and attacks deal bonus damage up to the overcharge percentage and the helix wand has almost a 20 percent overcharge percentage rating so you combine the proc from overcharge with five plus nine stacks of bonus shroud magic damage and as you're going to see in a minute we have a uh, plus 30% shroud magic damage bonuses in our talent tree. Then on top of that, do potentially three projectiles at once. This is by far, in my opinion, one of the strongest wands, if not the strongest wand in the game. So definitely a great one to hunt down and pick up. For the melee weapons, not as important, but to kind of stick with the magic user theme, I went with the light forged axe. This has three plus nine fire magic damage perks which will also further get buffed by the fire damage buffs from our talent tree as well as um, health leech so it has a five percent chance to leech some health on hit which is nice um, which will also mitigate not having water aura in an emergency situation um, moving on um, some of the uh, consumables you're going to want to keep on you at all times is obviously uh, anything that gives you plus to constitution for the bonus health because that is more important now. Um, grilled sand digger meat gives you plus four constitution when you're just starting out. It'll probably more be just like ram meat or the wolf meat, things like that. There is ones later on in the game that give you even higher, like plus five or plus six when you start making soups. So just unlock the farmer, start upgrading through her quest line and get, find all the different recipes you can. You'll eventually unlock those better quality meals to get the plus six. Um, the other ones that I highly recommend taking are any mushroom based uh, food item. These will always increase your intelligence and because the build has a little bit lower intelligence now, having these food items activated will basically mitigate what we're losing from our skill tree. Um, and again, this is only level three, but you can get ones that give you plus five or plus six uh, later on in the game. So you're pretty much equal, if not better, um, than we were before just by using a food item in these last 25 minutes, which is nice. I think the soups actually last 30 minutes, so that's even better. 
Um, I also like to take um, a nice stamina uh, item as well um, because you can never have too much stamina. One thing you're going to have to be worrying about, especially in a mage build, is dodging and repositioning as quickly as possible. And always having enough stamina on deck is uh, always a good thing. But one thing that I'm excited to point out and with the new build setup is that not only do we have pretty much infinite stamina, health, and um, or uh, health and mana, but we're also going to be getting a ton of stamina as well. So without any further ado, let's jump into the skills. Actually, sorry, before we jump into the skills, let me go over the spells real quick. Same as before, um, we're pretty much only going to be using Eternal Acid Bite, um, which is your go-to boss melter or uh, packed up group of enemies when there's a lot of uh, slow moving enemies with shields or a lot of uh, uh, packs of multiple enemies grouped up. If you can reposition and get this off, you'll pretty much melt all of them instantly, um, as well as bosses um, because they're slow moving. This does multiple ticks over time, um, which will not only pretty much instantly kill the enemy, but give you almost a 100% guaranteed proc on the 3% life leech from the new ring that we're going to be using. So this is a very good ability if you want to get your health back as well. Um, next, for our ranged and single target uh, enemies, we're going to be using Eternal Fireball. This basically sends out a somewhat tracking, uh, not actually not so much tracking, but a long range um, fireball that um, has an AoE explosion on impact. So not only do you do big damage to the single target, but every enemy within like 5 to 10 meters is also going to take a ton of damage. And again, this will be further boosted by the uh, two perks we're going to be taking in our talent tree. Uh, moving on, we have Eternal Light Burst. This is a low cast time, low damage ability that is primarily used to knock back and stun enemies. So if you're getting overwhelmed by a big group and you kind of don't have the ability to uh, run out and use uh, stamina to get out, you can do an Eternal Light Boost and that will basically stun everything around you. And you can either reposition or uh, cast one of your heavier, slower casting spells. Um, so nice little combo mechanic you can pull there and then last but not least you want to always bring some shroud meteor uh, spells with you this is one of the highest damage output spells in the game uh, which will again be further upgraded by several perks that we're going to be taking in the skill tree and basically what this does is within almost a 180 cone in front of you basically it seems like um, you just have to point this in any direction and every enemy that falls within that cone within the near vicinity of you will just be auto targeted by meteors that fall from the sky not only do they create craters in the ground and sometimes bigger bosses that get hit by this can actually get stuck in the ground um, so you can kind of stagger lock them but it does do a ton of aoe damage so really really handy to uh, take a bunch of those um, so that is the spells. Ice is a little underwhelming. They did buff it in the recent patch, but I still wouldn't really recommend it. Um, the Eternal version, the Tier 3 version, does a little bit of AoE damage, but it's honestly still not that good. Really, Acid Bite, Fireball, in the rare occasion, Eternal Light Burst, and then your Shroud Beater is really the only staff spells you're going to need to worry about. Um, and then any other time, you're just going to be using your wands. So um, that's pretty much all you got to worry about. Uh, but moving on to the skills, the most important thing. This is where a lot of stuff has changed. Um, so first off, I'll start right where we started off last time. Main things you're gonna wanna have in every single build you make, regardless of whether it's a mage, a warrior, a hunter, um, are these particular stamina based perks here. You wanna get the endurance runner for the 10% increased uh, sprint speed and decrease in stamina consumption as well as double jump to help you reposition more easily and then finally updraft to help with your gliding and traversing across the map i would try and take these regardless of the build that you're doing and you can probably pick these up halfway through the build or even at the end of the build to just make sure that you have them at all times moving on we now have a new one that we weren't using before well rested this basically is a one point uh, perk that gives your rested buff an additional five minutes and because this uh, build is kind of uh, low on stamina, uh, having that rested buff for an extra five minutes gives you a ton of increased stamina regen for a little bit longer, which is really nice to have. Obviously, you're gonna wanna try and upgrade the comfort of your base to get that um, uh, stamina regen buff, your rested buff up as long as possible. I believe the max right now is actually 100 comfort, which should give you around two hours. So really you don't need to put any other points into stamina as long as you're going into a fight ahead of time with your rested buff. You should have all the stamina, uh, stamina that you need. 
Uh, but moving on, the core uh, tree that you're going to want to start on is the Battle Mage tree. You're going to want to pick up the Point in Intelligence, followed by Arcane Deflection. Um, on a successful parry, you gain 20 mana, uh, followed by the Quick Point in Intelligence. And then Unity, damaging enemies with wands, has a 24% chance to recover 2% more mana. Uh, moving on, you're going to want to pick up Wand Master and Sting. This will give you 20% increased wand damage um, on repeated hits. And that does count for things like the Shroud, where it can shoot three projectiles at once. So that stacks up a little bit quicker with that particular weapon. Um, then you also have Wand Master, which again, combos with the, the Shroud Helix Wand um, to give you a 30% chance to spawn an additional projectile. This is how you're able to spawn three uh, projectiles at once, is the combination of the Helix Wand and then this Wand Master perk. Then lastly, you're going to want to quickly pick up Spirit and Intelligence to finish out this branch. Moving on. You're going to want to pick up this point here in Intelligence, and then we're not going to pick up anything else from this tree. Um, as you noticed before in the previous build, this whole tree was all the way filled, but Water Aura and Waters of Life got heavily nerfed, and there's a bug with Altars right now where the Exalted perks, things like Exalted, um, Arcane uh, Concentration, any of these ones where it's based off the levels of flame, um, they're all bugged right now. You should be getting at level 6 three additional points, but for whatever reason, we're only getting two now. So there's no point in wasting five points on Martyr just to get a, a, another five point ability that doesn't even work properly right now. So I skipped this whole branch of the tree and put those points in some better places. Uh, moving on, we go to the wizard tree, pick up a point in spirit, followed by this is the way when attacking with a magical weapon, all damage is increased by 10%. Then you're going to pick up uh, the point in Spirit, followed by Arsonist and Pyromaniac for 30% bonus fire damage. Um, once you get that fire damage, you're probably going to want to pick up this point in Intelligence, followed by Wizard. When attacking with a magical weapon, your critical hit chance is increased by 10%. We want to get as much magical critical hit chance as possible, because not only will that proc things like your stuns, but also your mass destruction chain hits, which is the next two abilities we're going to get. Uh, chain hit on a critical hit. With a magical weapon, um, the attack will automatically hit a second enemy within 15 meters for 5 shock damage per intelligence. And we're at 13 intelligence now instead of the 17 before. But with a few other things that we're going to be getting in another part of the tree, it's going to make up for that. Um, and then mass destruction kind of just builds on that where a critical attack with a magical weapon will now hit all enemies within a 20 meter radius instead of 15 um, of the target for 2 shock damage per intelligence. So you're going to be getting... Um, basically seven shock damage per intelligence that you have in a 20 meter radius every time that you crit with a spell, which with this particular build is like every other hit. So really, really nice there. Um, and then lastly, you're gonna wanna pick up uh, the last point in intelligence. Uh, moving on from there, the, you're gonna wanna pick up thunder and lightning for 30% shock damage. This is gonna help your um, uh, tempest wand when you're within the shroud. Um, as well as Dark Arts and Abyss for 30% additional Shroud damage. This is going to buff all the damage from our Helix Wand, as well as our AoE damage from our Shroud Meteor spell, which I said was one of the uh, heaviest hitting spells in the game. So definitely good to pick up those. Uh, next, you're going to pick up... Uh, actually, before you pick up these, you're going to want to pick up Quick Charge. Um, this is going to reduce the time staves are required to charge up a spell by 50%. Big, big perk here. Definitely a, a go-to perk that you have to have for this build. Um, followed by Counter-Strike. After receiving damage, there's a 20% chance to reflect 50% of that damage back to the attacker as fire damage. And that does combo with Arsonist and Pyromaniac. So 30% additional boost from that Counter-Strike damage. Um, then pick up the one point in Intelligence, followed by Begone. This isn't too important. Um, it basically substitutes your unarmed attack. Um, if your melee weapon breaks for whatever reason, with a magical powered punch that can uh, stun and knock back enemies. So not too crazy, you won't use it that often, but it basically you need it to get the next two. Uh, pick up Intelligence, and then lastly, Terror. This is a really, uh, really important one. On a critical hit with a spell, which again, we do all the time, the target will be stunned for four seconds. But what it doesn't say is that uh, chain hit and things like that, when you combo it with uh, chain hit and mass destruction, that can also proc with terror and you can end up stunning multiple enemies for four seconds. So if you so throw something like uh, acid bite down, that ticks uh, multiple times. So you pretty much have a guaranteed chance to stun enemies when you throw out acid bite because it's going to be uh, hitting so many times. So the, the odds of this terror perk uh, procking are pretty much guaranteed. Um, so definitely pick that up. 
Uh, moving on, you're going to want to pick up, um, uh, we went over this, um, uh, Radiant Aura and Sun Aura. These are the ones that I told you to hang on to. Um, this basically all fell foes within 10 meters take one fire damage per intelligence per second. And then Sun Aura basically combos with that to just do an additional one. This is good for just free extra passive damage for smaller, more annoying enemies like the bugs and things like that where they spawn in big packs and can kind of surround you. Um, basically, you don't even need to attack them. This Radiant and Sun Aura combo will just kill them for you. You just need to be standing near them and it will AoE them down uh, within like one or two hits. Um, so good combo there for just a bunch of free damage. Um, and then to kind of mitigate the lack of mana regeneration and definitely health regeneration because we're no longer using water aura this is the big change that i made in the build um, instead of just taking um, these two points of constitution and ending with heavy plates we are now taking the two points in constitution followed by shiny plates and heavy plates for the 20 percent bonus armor followed by constitution and then tower which when there are three or more enemies within 20 meters of you you will suffer 10 percent less damage um, and that's just overall physical damage. Um, so really, the only time you're going to be taking damage is by close combat enemies. So it's most likely going to be physical damage that you're going to be taking. So this is the one to go with. And then the next thing, um, we have evasion attack. Kind of a throwaway perk, but we're doing this to get to these next ones. Um, when equipped with a melee weapon, um, you can perform an evade attack, which dashes towards the enemy and deals more damage. Um, so you do get a little bit of a melee perk. We're not really going to be using our melee weapon that much, but... This you need to get to these next ones. Next we have Battle Heal uh, when dealing critical damage with a melee weapon. Again, not a big deal. Uh, heal for 5% of your maximum health. So in an emergency situation, technically yes, you can uh, bring out your axe and uh, potentially get some health back. But honestly, you're not going to need it because with these final perks here, these are blue, not red. Um, pick up the point in spirit for a little bit more mana, but then we have bloodletting uh, when scoring a critical hit with a magic weapon There's a 50% chance to spawn two health mana or stamina orbs and then gathering the orb replenishes 10% of their uh, respective resource so basically with the amount of crit chance that we have with our spells these orbs are constantly going to be spawning and uh, Anytime you have a big pack of enemies, you're going to notice it starts off like a snowball. Once one enemy drops, these little orbs are going to spawn and you're going to be getting free health regen and mana regen that's actually going to be instant when you pick it up and faster than if you were waiting for the water aura to proc because that is like a regeneration over time, um, which you would have had to wait for. With these orbs, the second you pick them up, it just instantly gives you 10% of that respective resource automatically. So you'll be like at half health, quickly pick up one or two of these health orbs and your just health bar is going to instantly go to max instead of waiting for it to recharge. It's going to be a, basically a faster mana, health, and stamina recharge than Water Aura was doing. Um, so I like it even more, in my opinion. Then we're going to be taking Life Burst when killing an enemy with a magical weapon. All players, including yourself, within 15 meters of the target, gain health equal to three times your intelligence. So we have 13 intelligence, could be 20 plus with food items. So anytime that you kill an enemy, you're going to be getting additional health there, um, which is really nice. Um, and then lastly, we have blood magic. This is going to be the key perk that's going to kind of mitigate not having double rings of rapacity for that uh, mana regen. When your mana drops below 20%, you instantly restore 20% of your max mana at the cost of one health per mana. Uh, this will stop at one health. So basically anytime, um, and I can demonstrate this here, uh, if we just start spamming spells, once we get down below 20%, you're gonna notice, whoops, that a big chunk of our mana just instantly appears. And we have next to no time that we have to wait to spam another fireball. So you can just sit here and just keep spamming them. And as long as you've got enough, that little bit of a burst gives you enough mana to cover anything. And so it's not going to be super quick, instant amount, but you hit so hard that by the time you get two to three spells off, pretty much every enemy around you should already be dead. So you don't need necessarily that full amount. And that's not taking into consideration, that's just your instant boost. That's not uh, taking into consideration the orbs that you're gonna be picking up, which will also instantly 
recover your mana and health. So I started out right outside the Sun Temple, which you can group up a ton of enemies. I wanted to do a quick demonstration to show you how many of these orbs you can proc and spawn at any, any given point, uh, point and see how easily it is to grab them and regenerate your health and stuff. So let's jump into here and show a little bit of the combat. And you can still one hit even the strongest bosses, um, like this guy for example. Still do enough damage to one hit him with just one spell. Only now, we do less damage because we have the extra bonus armor, but we also have all of these glowing orbs that just instantly respawn our health, respawn our mana, respawn our stamina, and it just goes forever. Pain hit there, procs, we get an AoE stun, all of these orbs, and now before it was like 35 health that you were getting for like little uh, health kill. See, so we just drop there. Instantly get our health back. We picked up that health orb and we're just instant. There's some more mana. There's some more health. Got another guy here. Okay, got unlucky on that one. But we can just keep on going here. Get a bunch of guys. We'll, we'll get them all grouped together. It's okay that we take a little bit of damage. Okay. Everyone still melts, only now. We just got instant health. Oh, we took some took some damage. Grab one of the ten, 10 health orbs that are just sitting here floating. And we regenerate faster than if we were waiting on water or even before it was nerfed. We're getting health back faster with these orbs. And mana faster with these orbs than we were getting with water ore. So you basically can make use of the orbs to regenerate your mana instead of the second ring of rapacity and then use that life leech ring to basically get a percentage of the damage you're doing with all your spells back as health as well. Um, so even if you're full health, look at that, boom, just instantly back up. We got two health orbs sitting there. I'll let them let do some damage on them. Over here, boom, just instantly get some health back. Negated. And it's almost like on hit, too. It's not on um, hill, which is nice. Oh, just got hit again. And go and pick up some health. So, yeah, super, super handy. And uh, the survivability is just as good, if not higher now, with this new uh, loadout than it was when we had, well, our... Uh, uh, the water well there, the water aura, and the wells of life there. So, definitely, in my opinion, the best new setup. The orbs are, in my opinion, just as, if not more, overpowered than the double rings and the water aura. So, that, in my opinion, is the best new setup. I don't know why that didn't hit. Oh, there you go. Stun, look at, see, just tons of orbs. And you just see our mana regenerating too. But what's great about that um, bloodletting perk with these orbs is we're not only getting mana regeneration now. These orbs, every time you get a kill, it's gonna, no matter what, spawn a health and a mana orb, but you're also potentially getting stamina orbs as well. So you're getting all three of your key attributes regenerated nearly instantly in the middle of combat and it's not like you have to worry about getting hit because if you don't need it and you walk over the orb it's not going to pick it up so they just sit there on the battlefield and the second that you need it you can just teleport over to it pick it up and you have all the regeneration that you need so by far in my opinion the best new setup after the patch um hope you guys enjoyed it and uh yeah i think this proves how good it is and how good the build can still be even though they nerfed a bunch of things um the changes in armor the changes in perks definitely if not uh made it even better uh, made up for the nerfs that happened in the patch um, with water aura so yeah if you enjoyed the video if you found it uh helpful be sure to smash that like button comment down below i appreciate all of you guys' feedback but until the next one hope everyone has a great day 
and we'll see you all later.